our bodies are still called mortal bodies even though they have been paid for but when there's a redemption it will be the body of the son glorified the redemption will be the body of the son glorified right now the spirit of the son has taken possession the redemption will be the body of the son glorified are we in the building the spirit of adoption is the spirit of his son romans chapter 8 but before we open there is a spirit of adoption now let me ask you the spirit of adoption is it the spirit of god please i want other people to hear you around the world hmm? are you sure is the spirit of jesus the spirit of god is the spirit of jesus the spirit of his son okay so yes 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 right is the spirit of his son your spirit is your spirit the spirit of god hmm. romans 8 2 mm -mm. let's see how romans 8 2 describes for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death so the spirit of life is where in christ jesus romans 8 9 mm -mm. romans 8 9 but you are not in the flesh but in the spirit if so be that the spirit of god dwell in you now if any man have not the spirit of christ he is none of his so the spirit of christ there refers to the spirit of his son huh yes okay romans 8 9 there is the spirit of him the spirit of him take note of that so he is the spirit of life romans 8 2 the spirit of god and the spirit of christ romans 8 9 romans 8 10 the spirit life because of righteousness romans 8 10 the spirit life because of righteousness romans 8 11 the spirit of him or his spirit is bible study romans 8 15 for you have now received the spirit of bondage again to fear but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry abba father why adoption is used is identification that we are now identified in the son placed identification romans 8 16 <clears throat> stay with me the spirit itself bearded witness with our spirit that we are the children of god it bears witness with our the word bear witness has to be explained so you're not confused bear witness means to testify or to acknowledge so the spirit of the son is the spirit of who huh is it the spirit of jesus yes okay so if the spirit bears witness with your spirit that you are a child of god do you have your own spirit apart from the spirit of god so what is he talking about same spirit that's a good one same spirit that's accurate that's correct so the spirit of his son the spirit of adoption the spirit of him our spirit is the same is the same the same spirit spirit of god spirit of adoption spirit of his son our spirit the spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons of god so the spirit of god testifies that our spirit is the spirit of god it's the same thing are you understanding the same spirit you don't have two spirits inside you. You are not a monster. It's one spirit. He that is joined to the Lord 
is one spirit. His spirit is my spirit. So let me ask you. Is the Holy Spirit your spirit? Yes. Huh? Yes. Huh? Yes. Be confident. Yes. <laughs> so the Holy Spirit is your spirit. Because you and the Lord. So the same spirit in Jesus. What Jesus can do. Exactly. Same spirit. So the spirit of adoption means we share the same identity in our spirit with Christ. Identification. See, our identification is spirit, soul, and body. Our identification is total. Spirit, soul, and body. Uh, do you remember yesterday we were talking about the fact that the word logizomai. Do you remember logizomai? Logizomai means credited to my account. All right. So when there is a logizomai, okay, which is to an accounting term for crediting, when when the debt of Christ is spoken of, logizomai will mean what? That debt is my debt. That burial and that resurrection, meaning that when Jesus died, it was deposited in whose account? my account when he was buried it was deposited in whose account my account when he rose from the dead it was deposited where in my account so who died you died who was buried you were buried who rose you rose who defeated death you defeated death so as he is so am i that's identification that's the reality of the gospel you are not a struggling poor old sinner no as he is so are you. This knowledge must be supreme over your feelings. Even if you feel as nasty as the devil, you are one with Christ. Your feelings must be subject to your knowledge. And eventually what you know will change how you feel. Am I teaching good here? Keep swallowing these teachings. As they enter you, they will free you. How many of you remember somebody gave, gave us a testimony last night who was struggling with addictions and he said he just kept hearing the word. Now he is surprised that he is the one that is free from all those things and how he got free, he cannot explain. Then he said, in fact, what Papa is saying is correct. Just keep swallowing the word. It is what you eat that will determine what you push out now. If you eat word, eat word, eat word, eat word, you become wordified. If there's English like that. When you become wordified, your action will be wordified. It's not by might nor by power. Stop struggling to be a good person. You will end up a hypocrite. Relax and swallow the word. Let the word enter and work it out. I, I feel like I'm teaching here. See, when the word enter, it will work it out. You will be the one that will find out that you are no more interested, no more appetite. The word will kill every antichrist appetite. You just find out that after a while, the appetite is the works of righteousness. It's not struggle. We are not pretending here. Be yourself and let the word enter. Stop acting. We are not actors. We are real people here. Am I communicating at all? Keep eating it in. Keep eating it in. Every form of addiction will be wiped out when this word enters. The problem is people don't have word and they tell them live right. So when they try, it's not working. They pretend. They pretend. And everybody is pretending for everybody. Everybody is pretending for everybody. Then the day pressure comes and you manifest your true color. Ah, ah. Can a Christian behave like this? Even you that is doing ah, ah. If your own pressure comes, others will do ah, ah. So everybody is ah, 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 ah. Because nobody is being real. Am I talking to somebody here? But when you just be yourself and let the word begins to enter, let the word begin to enter. As you swallow the word, the word will come and saturate your being. You won't even know when you are living right. It will be natural. You don't plan to urinate. You re urinate when urine comes. It's natural. Yeah. 
If you could live right, you, know, you don't need Jesus. You cannot. That's why Jesus came. That's why everything he does, he did, is credited to your account. Why is there credit in your account? So you use it when you need it. The reason for credit in your account is so you use it when you need it. So when you do wrong, what do you do? You withdraw the credit. You withdraw from your credit. I'm dead to sin. I'm alive to God. I reckon with that. I do not reckon with my behavior. I reckon with what is in my. If I'm teaching good shout, I hear, I hear. Now sit down, sit down. Let's run, let's run, let's run. <clears throat> ah, that means the spirit of adoption is all sharing identity in our spirit with Christ. That means our spirit does not grow into sonship. We are born sons. Let's examine this word very well. Logizomai. It means to give account. It means to speak of what exists. Logizomai. It means impute or imputed. It's an accounting term. Which means to give account. To speak of or to speak of what exists. Romans chapter 4 verse 8. Let's see brother Paul. Romans chapter 4 verse number 8. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not logizomai sin. Impute. To whom the Lord will not account sin or record sin in his account. To whom the Lord will not credit his sin. That man is blessed. Who even though he has failures... God, the judge of all, refuses to credit it in his account. That's the blessing. The gift of righteousness. Devoid of works. Now, why did God not reckon with Abraham's sin? Why? Romans 4.3 Romans chapter 4 verse 3. For what saith the scripture, Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. So question, why will God not reckon with Abraham's sin? Because Abraham believed. He believed. Look at verse 5. Romans chapter 4 verse number 5. Now, to him that walketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. His faith is counted logizomai. The word justified means he is discharged of his wrongdoing. When you are justified, it means the judge looked at you. And by his authority as the judge, discharges you of wrongdoing. Are you understanding? Do you understand? Yeah. It's like recently, uh, President Donald Trump, just before he left office, granted pardon to 140 people who were prisoners. Their prison term was not over. But presidential power. He called them out. And said whatever they said you did. I as the president of the United States of America. Release you discharged and acquitted without prejudice. That is in your record. It does not exist that you ever committed that crime. And if anybody accuses you of it. You can sue him for character assassination. Now that's what a man who is a president has the power to do. How much more Jesus? <laughs> how much more Jesus? I said how much more Jesus? Jesus didn't only just say come you're free. Jesus died. He paid the price and rose triumphantly and said once you believe in me you are righteous. Now imagine that Donald Trump after giving that, those people executive pardon then the people go and begin to say, I know I'm a very wicked person. I know I don't deserve this freedom. I should go back to prison. And he goes back to the prison door and stand there. I want to enter. 
I know they have said I'm free, but I don't think I am free. Let me just enter. That is what Christians do every time they pray and confess their sin. Every time you pray and confess your sin, you're going back to the prison to say, even though somebody paid for me, but I don't think it is correct. I know myself. I want to pay for myself. You are a fool. <laughs> Not just fool, fool. <laughs> 2,000 years ago, he died my death. So when he died, who died? It's called identification. That's what Christ did for us. That's what Christ did for us. And you are totally free from it, no record. Long ago, long ago, the old account was set to long ago. The record clears today. It's clear. So that's why when we come in prayer, we don't come with any what I, whether, whether I remember or I remember not. We come boldly. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord. I stand before you as the righteousness of God. Thank you, Lord. I am as holy as Jesus. And if you hear Jesus, you hear me always. If you cannot say no to Jesus, you cannot say no to me. The spirit of his son is in my heart. Proclaiming and announcing very loud God's affectionate love towards me. So the word justified means he is discharged of his wrongdoing. It means from the point of faith... From the point of faith, God stopped reckoning with Abraham's sin. You didn't hear that. From the point of faith, God stopped recording Abraham's sin. From the point of faith, God stopped reckoning with Abraham's sin. That's why if you read how God dealt with Abraham, he never for once reckoned with his fault. Not for once. Did you notice that Abraham's believing was once? He believed once and he was righteous forever. Once. Once. Abraham had a cause to even battle with an affair. Yes? But the believing in Genesis 15 was what was credited to his account. The issue of him and the, the house lady him and all that, non-recorded. Because from the point of faith, God stops reckoning with Abraham's failures. From the point of faith. The moment you believe in Jesus, sin is no more recorded in your account. The moment you receive Jesus, so Abraham's sin was never reckoned with he believed just once and that believing was credited to him for righteousness. His faith. Abraham's faith recorded not Abraham's conduct. His faith was recorded not his conduct. His faith. Because his conduct is not great but his faith is great. And it's his faith that is recorded. For him to be great means it was not his conduct. But his faith. God dealt with Abraham on the basis of faith. Not the basis of morality. That's why even today, God doesn't deal with you on the basis of morality. Otherwise, there are moralists who don't believe in Jesus. And God has no dealings with them. Because morality does not stand a chance. But God deals with you on the basis of faith. Why do people go to hell? Not for bad behavior. But for unbelief in Jesus. When people don't believe in Jesus, they go to hell. Because faith is the currency that is recorded by God. Teaching good? Now, thank you Lord. So Abraham's conduct needs not to be righteous before he is called righteous. Did you hear that? Yeah. Faith was what was needed for him to be called righteous. So Abraham believing God, not acting wisely or acting well, but believing God. Righteousness comes by faith. That is, his sin will not be reckoned with. 
Look at Romans chapter 4 verse 6. You will love that. Romans 4 6. Even as David also described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness without works. God takes record of righteousness without works. He calls him righteous in spite of his actions. Abraham was called righteous without his actions. Why was he called righteous? Faith. Romans chapter 4 verse 17 which brother Paul quoted from Psalm 32 verse 3. Romans 4 7. Sorry, Romans chapter 4 verse 7 quoted from Psalm 32 verse 3 saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. So reckoning is not a denial. It's not that his sins were denied. It's that his sins were not recorded. He wasn't treated with his sins. So Abraham sinned, but God forgave. Romans 5, 12 to 14 now. <clears throat> 5, 12 to 14. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not seen after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is a figure of him that was to come. That is, even though Abraham was in that class, but righteousness was what was credited to his account. Death reigned from Adam to Moses. Abraham was inside. But in Abraham's case, what was credited to his account under that dispensation was righteousness. Why? He believed. Faith in Christ. So what did God do? God reckoned with Abraham's faith. Not his sins. Not his deeds. Not his conduct. The word impute, logizomai means to take account of. When I take account of faith, I am not taking account of anything else. When I take account of faith, so in God's moral compass, in God's moral compass, faith is highest. That is, morality for God is faith. Morality for God is faith. Faith in Christ. So, something else may be existing, but I'm not taking account of it. What I'm taking account of is faith. Logizomai means God is a judge. God dismisses every evidence. Why? Because Ab Abraham believed. So we cannot count his sins against him because he has believed in the death of Christ. It's not that he hasn't sinned, but because he has believed in the death of Christ, his sin is not recorded. That's why it's called blessing now. It's not the name of a sister. <laughs> That's why it's called blessing. The blessing there is that you appeared before the global court of justice, standing before the judge of the whole earth, and your accusers are holding hard evidence against you. But you have faith in Christ. After stating all their cases with their evidence, the chief judge said, even though those evidences are there, they are dismissed. They will not be recorded. And he looked at you with all that they have said against you. And he said, acquitted and discharged. 
in the face of evidence. Why? Faith in Christ. So unto him that that worketh not but believeth on him that justifieth the criminal. His faith is counted for righteousness. Sato Balaya. Am I teaching here? Tell me, I believe. I believe. I'm justified. I believe. Say it again. I believe. I believe. I'm justified. So, Logan Somai does not deny wrongdoing. Uh -uh. It just doesn't affirm them. It doesn't deny them. Why? Why does it not affirm wrongdoing? Because of Romans 4.25. It won't affirm it. Because of Romans 4.25. Kabada. Romans 4.25 Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Something was done for you. What did you do? You sinned. What did Christ do for you? He died. So his death negated your sin. And by your faith in that death, you are treated as sinless. So since the death was done for you, God reckons with the death of Christ. He doesn't reckon with your wrongdoing. He reckons with the death of Christ. He reckons with the resurrection of Jesus. He does not reckon with your sins. Hebrews chapter 8. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, so if something is done for me, I will reckon with it. I reckon with what is done for me, not what I have done, but what has been done for me. Done by Christ for me. You know? Listen, let me give you a little homework if you have the time. Read Romans chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5 and circle the word for, 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 for. Everywhere you see for, for, for. In Romans chapter 3, 4 and 5. Any, anywhere you see for, the thing that follows for is for you. Anywhere you see for. Romans chapter 3 verse 4 and 5. Take that as a homework and enjoy it. Hebrews 8, 12 now. <clears throat> Hebrews 8, 12. Get him blessed. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. To their circle there if your Bible is your own. Except you borrowed it. And even if you did, circle after all, it has space there for you to write. To their unrighteousness. That scripture was taken from Jeremiah 31, 31. Jeremiah 31, 31. <clears throat> Behold, the day is come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. 32. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, say of the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. Next verse. Ah, oh, glory to God. Next verse. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, Know the Lord. For they all or they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, say the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. I like to go to the Hebrew context. The word remember no more is the word zakar. Z-A-K-A-R in Hebrew. It's the same word used for mindful of something. Remember no more. Zakar. Mindful of something or to be mindful or to consider it. The word remember is not something you forget or didn't forget. It's the word be mindful. Something you consider. Something you take note of or something you don't take note of. Your sins I will take note of no more. 
I will take note of no more. It was translated in the Greek as Mimnesko. Zakar in the Hebrew, Mimnesko in the Greek. How do you spell Mimnesko? M I M N E S K O. Mimnesko. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 6 is where it is used. Hebrews chapter 2, verse number 6. But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art Mimnesko of him? Mindful. So when he says, I will remember no more, it means I will no more be mindful of. Same word, I will no more consider. So it's not a denial. God is not saying, I will not remember because it does not exist. What it means is, I will not be mindful of. So God is not mindful of sin. Why is he not imputing sin? Because of what Jesus did. So what does he impute? Righteousness. Look at 2 Peter 3 2. See the way Brother Peter uses it. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 2. That ye be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets. Be mindful or think about. So that word zakar is Hebrew and mimnesko is not to deny. It means they are not acknowledged. So if I am to reckon, what must I do? It means I must reckon with what God reckons with. I reckon with what God reckons with. Abraham related with God based on that fact. That man was bold. Hey, Abraham. That is the very first person he relates with about this fact. God. We must never stand in God's presence. If you don't understand what I'm teaching you. Never stand in God's presence with a memory of sin. Father, I have come. Father, you know, a fish in the water cannot do without swimming. No. No, you are not a fish. <laughs> you are not a fish. <laughs> you are not in the water. <laughs> Don't let all wise fables, muthos, don't let all those village things haunt you out of what God has done for you. Hallelujah. So if I want to glorify God, I glorify God by saying what God says about sin. Your sins and iniquities, I will remember them again. I will no more be mindful of them. Glory to God. So when people talk about confessing sins, what they mean by that confession is that you are developing an unrighteousness consciousness. A sin consciousness. Whereas Logizomai and Zakar and Mimnesco are telling us to reckon with the gift of righteousness. Most of those things come in subtly. You know? Come in very gently. See, are you now trying to say that even when we do wrong, we should pretend that we didn't do it? Are you trying to say? So now, are you? Okay, okay wait, Pastor. So now, so now, so Pastor, what you're trying to say now is that when I sin, I should just do bold face. My conscience won't allow me, Pastor. I didn't expect your conscience to allow you because your conscience is unschooled. It's not trained. So just like any untrained human being will behave, that's how your conscience is behaving. What I'm doing now is training your conscience in righteousness. So your conscience will, will be at home with righteous talk. 
So your conscience will not be comfortable with seeing talk. It's a training. So pastor, are you saying, oh pastor, that if I see now, I should just bold face and say, I am righteous. Yes, that's what I'm saying. You are not bold in face. You are acknowledging what Christ did, which is bigger than your sin. Are we teaching here? So, so pastor, are you saying we should never confess sin? To who? God does not reckon with sin. So who are you confessing it to? No, it's a question. Who are you confessing to now? God does not reckon. God has no record. He doesn't have a place to be writing people's sins. He doesn't have such record. I know some of you, the church where you came from, they told you that every time you sing, God's video camera is filming you. As you're sitting, he's filming you and the record is kept. And when you die and finally arrive at heaven, they will play it on big television and they will show everything you're doing. Anybody who told you that thing is very wicked. He has wickeded you. <laughs> is there English like that? He has wickeded you. <laughs> Your sins and iniquities God does not reckon with sin. So somebody said, when I sin, what do I do? Reckon with what Christ has done. What Christ did, who did he do it for? You. What you did, what you did, who did you do it against? Yourself. So you sinned against yourself. And Christ died to take care of that sin. So when you do wrong, you and Christ, who is bigger? Christ. Who should you take side with? Christ. How do you take side with Christ? By ignoring what you have done and acknowledging what Christ has done. So when you do wrong, when you do wrong, what do you do? I am dead to sin and alive to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I say, ah, how can a man of God say he cannot confess your sin? This man of God, I don't understand him at all. How can you understand me? How can you understand me? Except it be given to you from above. <laughs> Somebody shout, I am righteous. I am accepted. Say, I reckon with what Jesus has done on my behalf. Say, the work of Christ is credited to my account when I need it. I withdraw. I thought somebody would shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, I'm rounding up, but listen to this now. <clears throat> Righteous consciousness utters Abba Father. Righteous consciousness means I reckon or I speak of what God is mindful of. I reckon or I speak of what God is mindful of. What is God mindful of? God is mindful of the sacrifice of Jesus. That's what God is mindful of. God is not mindful of the bad, bad things you did. They are of no value. But he's mindful of the sacrifice of his son. Because that is what is of value. So what happens? When you've done wrong, you take side with the sacrifice of his son. And acknowledge what his son has done. And that's righteous consciousness. And when you awake to righteousness, you sin not. When you awake to righteousness, you sin not. And if you keep awaking to sin, you keep sinning. But if you awake to righteousness, you sin not. Teaching good? Yeah. You identify with the sacrifice of Jesus. So that's what I reckon with. I reckon with the gift of eternal life. No songs of sin consciousness. Even Abraham will not sing it. If Abraham comes to this service, even with his Old Testament mentality, and you start singing sin conscious songs, he won't sing with you. Abraham in Genesis knew better than many Christians of today. He knew better. He knew better. The man was bold. Look at Abraham. In spite of all his weaknesses, God is going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham said, come, 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 come. Far be it from you. 
that the judge of the whole earth will destroy the righteous with the sinner. Come, come close. God, come close. If you get there and you find 50 righteous, will you destroy? God say no. 45? No. 40? No. 35? No. 30? No. See Abraham. Bargaining without any sacrifice. 25? No. 20? No. 15? No. 10? No. Then he stopped. I wish he had gone two. God will have said no. If he had even said one, God will have said no. If he had said nobody, God will have said no. Because that prayer of Abraham will have stood in the gap for Sodom. But Abraham gave up at ten. Don't forget the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. So that's why in prayer you don't stop. You pray until all that God has prepared comes into manifestation. Somebody shout, I hear you. When God saw Abraham's heart, God said, I know where your heart is. Your heart is Lord. Don't worry. Whether there's a righteous man or not, since your heart is bothered for Lord, I will save Lord. That is before the death of Christ. Then is it now after Christ has died that you say you are praying and you, are, you don't know whether God has answered or not? Sometimes when you pray, God says yes. Other times, God says no. And some other times, God says, you shut up, man. You don't know God. All the promises of God are in him. Yes and amen. To the glory of God by us. I thought somebody would shout hallelujah. I reckon with the gifts of righteousness. I do not consider sin. He was delivered up for my offenses. And he was raised again for my justification. Hallelujah. In righteousness we act on the word. What's God's word to you? Your sins and iniquities. He will remember them no more. Reckon with that. It's not a denial of wrong deeds. But an affirmation of the effective work of Christ. I'm not denying that I did something wrong. If I need to apologize, I will apologize. But after I apologize to you, I will take sides with what Christ has done. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Where are the righteous people in the house? Lift your right hand and say to me, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Stand on your feet and let me hear a living amen. 